Welcome to the About That Water podcast show, Trading Thursdays. You know, I actually recorded this whole episode and did not turn on the mic, so I just played it back and it was completely empty. So, trying this second time around. All right, so I started talking about Neo because Neo was actually listed as one of the top movers right now for the New York Stock Exchange, which I I am using the uh, TD Ameritrade right now to try to see what are the stop, the top movers in the market right now. And right now they have NEO ACB, which is the Aurora Cannabis Inc. XPEV, which is uh, Jinping. It's a Jinping electric vehicle company. So that's what they do. And we got GE. So it's just top four. Um, there's some other, I guess I'll call them honorable mentions, which is like Bank of America and Ford. And these companies are on here only because of the value. Uh, this is volume trading. Some people trade only on the volume. So that means that if the volume of the company is, uh, and the volume means how many trades are happening or transactions are happening in that particular day or hour, depending on how, if you're watching it live or not. So for the day, Neo had 302.5 million uh, trades. And that's crazy. So that means that some, all these people were buying and selling. This is how many times. So you can look at it as, all right, I bought this shirt, I sold it. And somebody did that 300, two times. And the value goes up because it was less uh, amount of shares for that company. So it's like a supply and demand when it comes to the stock market, for those of you who didn't know. Now, Neo is cool because I like to talk about them um, uh, sometimes, mostly Tesla, but Neo is seen as the next big thing. They trying to boast it up as if it will be a Tesla killer. And I slight, I highly doubt it because Tesla is way above its time right now. I think they maybe be about six, I want to say maybe six years ahead of the competition right now. Uh, Being as so Tesla is working on having the body, me having the battery embedded with the frame so it would increase it would increase the charge time and decrease the price to manufacture the vehicle and the cool thing about it is that tesla now is able to kind of shift some of those body parts to other vehicles so like the tesla model s when they come out with the new version model s like the tesla s plaid it's the same vehicle they just kind of modify some things around it. But for the cost to produce that vehicle is a lot cheaper. So right now, um, they are making, Tesla is making about $27 per $100 that is spent for the vehicle. And they actually project to have that price increase. So They plan on making more money as they get better at producing their vehicles, which means that there are going to be some other modifications in the way that they produce the vehicle so they could actually make more. So you can look at almost to 50%. They actually are making 50% profit off of every vehicle that they're producing, if you want to look at it that way, like an easy $100 piece. Now... When it comes to Neo, Neo is banking on either their automation technology along with their battery swapping technology. And with the battery swapping piece, they are banking on like how long it takes to remove the battery and put it back in with another battery. And that was something that was discussed a long time ago. When Tesla tried it, they didn't like it. So they scratched that whole process and just went to the charging model, which made sense. Um, But obviously it was a lot to hold those batteries. So batteries are just sitting around. 
you know, waiting for it to be replaced. So it, in a sense, if you think about it, it produced more waste uh, to kind of store these batteries, charge these batteries, wait for the next car to come up to try to swap out these batteries. Sounds nice, like almost how cell phones. I mean, think about it. We used to have removable batteries back in the day. Now they all embedded into the phone. You can't even, if you take the phone apart, you done removed or, or mess up the warranty on it. So that's kind of pointless. So if you think about it, Tesla is moving along the way of cell phones, if you think about it. So, and you see how far cell phones are going. I mean, sorry to say uh, the passing of the creator for Samsung. I'll give a moment of silence for him. All right, that's his moment of silence. Now, let's get to some more stuff. All right. Now, even though Neil has been moving along pretty well, if you think about it, there are several billion people in China. And not to say that all of them drive, but there are more drivers than there are here in the U.S. And also, if they can expand over to India which is not far from them. So they don't have to worry about too much of the shipping costs. Just kind of put it on their trail car uh, or a train and actually roll it on over to their country. And they can sell their cars that way. Um, And since they're over there in mainland, they can travel all throughout uh, over there to Europe, Southeast Asia, and other countries just by railway which is pretty cool. And then also they have such a close uh, proximity to, let's say, uh, some of the countries in Africa that they can actually ship their cars over there too. So China has quite a bit to play around with. Um, But with their battery swapping technology, I think it's going to be tough sell. It's going to be a tough sell versus Tesla can just set up some solar farms and start charging up cars immediately. So, and I think that Tesla is going to take on uh, quite a bit because if you think about it, it, this is, I'm just talking about the car industry that they have, but they also have the power wall. They have the solar panels. They have the Skynet. They have, um, Yeah, that's pretty much it. But they have enough in-house that they can help sustain a lot of things that are going on, even in the car industry. So one part of the company could pay for the other one if they're having a bad spout. So Tesla is in a good position right now, along with the other gigafactories that they're creating to manufacture cars locally. So they still haven't hit their capacity of how many vehicles they can make within a given year because of these new factories that are going up. Now, remember I mentioned that Tesla's equation to kind of find out the value of them is the vehicle production times the value of the automation. Uh, So with the automation side of the vehicle, they can drive around and start doing more of an Uber style of uh, automation. So say if you just wanted to have somebody pick you up, you can actually call a Tesla line or on your phone, just say, Hey, I want to go somewhere. And a Tesla will show up to where you're at and take you where you need to go. So if Tesla's looking into their model to mimic it for their own benefit, there's a lot to happen right now. So I would definitely stay tuned to Tesla. And if you haven't bought any Tesla yet, I would say look forward to getting it because I think it's going to go up to like another $1,000 uh, share price. I would say maybe this time next year. I don't know. You can probably quote me on it. Let's see how it happens. I'll mark it on my calendar, see what happens. And keep in mind that this is educational purposes only. I'm not telling you what to do or how to do it. I'm just talk- just sharing my thoughts. And you can do what you want to do with your money. Um, There are some other companies right now because a lot of people are actually staying home. So I want you to think about how people are 
navigating in this new space, this new mandatory space of staying home, watching TV, cooking their own food, visiting the doctor via their computer, exercising at home, like the Peloton bike. So if you think about it, there's a trading company in just about all those areas. So uh, even in listening to this podcast, a lot of the people aren't listening to podcasts as much because they're actually home. But when things start to open up again, people listen to podcasts again. So I'll have all my episodes ready. And those of you who are listening to it now, you might be driving or just home and cooking a meal, listening to this on Alexa or Google Home. Thank you, by the way. And so moving along in this space, you have to kind of think about it. All right, how does this affect my investments? If you're banking on the companies that are planning on opening up after a vaccine, you're going to have to wait quite a bit because a lot of people are going to be afraid to take the vaccine and some people are going to be excited. So I really think that there is going to be an uptick once the vaccine is available. However, I think it's going to be short-lived because a lot of the industries are going to find out that a lot of people still aren't traveling because they have to have to wait for the vaccine to come to them or they had to wait in line to get the vaccine. And we saw how long the lines were just to vote here in the US. So can you imagine the lines will be for vaccine and there is no mail-in option. <laughs> so it's gonna be crazy. And with this remote option stuff that's going on, there is a company called TeleDoc. So you have to actually sign up through their app to get seen by a doctor or a psychiatrist and all they have to do is just press a button and talk to you. Now the cool thing about it, Teledoc is right now at $236 and some change. Now if you take it I me, mean, I'm sorry, Teledoc, I'm on the wrong one. Teledoc. Polydoc stock is at 208.51, and this is on Thursday. So, um, and I have to say, for those of you who are only investing once a month and at the beginning of each month, you guys are really making out right now because every, I would say just about every Thursday, first Thursday of the week, The stock markets have been down and it seems like this is pretty much it. This might be my new, uh, my new investment day is on Thursdays because I'm looking at just on Google right now, looking at Teledoc stock and I put it out six months and their ticker is T as in Tango, D as in Delta, O as in Oscar, C as in Charlie. So it's TDOC. And just about every Thursday, they've been down. And all the upswings are like within the month or whatever. But for some reason, just on Thursdays, they always down. It's interesting. So those of you who would like to invest within that first week of any month and have your set schedule, I would say stick to it because this stuff actually works. I didn't think it worked. Uh, Because I talked to, like, some other people, they just invest whenever they get a paycheck. And those paychecks fall on all days. And there are some people that actually just save up their pool of money, like maybe $50 each paycheck, and just dump $100 in. And it seems to be doing really well. Now, those of you who cannot afford a whole stock at one particular time, there are ways that you can do it. Um... You can do it through Cash App, which I have a full episode on how to invest via Cash App. You can actually just kind of put in whatever you can afford at the time into that particular stock and just let it sit and ride, and you'll do well. Because the stock market tends to always go up, even though after time, so it doesn't really matter. You might see some dips, but in the long run, 
if you don't mind waiting, the delayed gratification, the one that gets us all, you actually fare out pretty well. Um, even looking at TeleDoc for just the beginning of this year, of yeah, just one year out, actually, it was at $80. Yeah, so it was at eighty dollars this beginning of the year, and now it's at two hundred eight. So even if you just put in a hundred bucks back then, didn't touch it, you pretty much doubled your money. So just take, you know, take the small steps and just let it ride. Don't let other people deter you from your plan. Make sure you set your plan, keep it, because this is your money at the end of the day. It's not theirs. Now if they got something to say. Are they putting in money with you? No. More likely they not. So enjoy your money the way you want to. And because, you know, it's your wallet, it's not theirs. So enjoy. Now, back to this Neo thing. I don't think Neo um, is going to be so much as a Tesla killer. I think they're going to have a little ride for a while. But I think... The main thing that will help them out the most is if their country give huge subsidies to their uh, citizens as they purchase the vehicle. And by purchasing the car, they can save, you know, more than what we were getting here in the U.S., which was about $3,000 off of Tesla. Now, if they do a little something like that and actually give the car companies uh, better incentives and stuff like that, then yeah, it's going to take off pretty well financially. But as an industry, I don't think it's going to last that long. So if you are investing with them, I I really don't think they're going to last too much longer. I'll say maybe five years. Um, If they can make it to 10, that would be interesting. Um, So, But I am invested with them. I'm going to try to ride this wave. As so many people here are uh, investing with them as well, but I don't think they're gonna they're gonna stay around too much longer, um, no more than like ten years, honestly. So I think it'll probably get up to like maybe two hundred bucks, but right now in the news they kind of slated them for. I've seen some places where they said, "Oh yeah, they're gonna get up to like eighty dollars a share." So pretty much if you dump all your money in there right now, you have the possibility of doubling it. But meh, you pick and choose. For me, honestly, I don't think they're going to have too much of a a dog in this fight. Maybe unless they decide to stop to do the swapping battery thing. And or if they plan on using these batteries where they can be hot swappable from in the house something that people can do at home, then that will be a game changer. Uh, But if it's something that they have to go to a particular factory and there aren't that many factories to go change the battery, are they going to have them rechargeable and stuff like that? Maybe. I've seen some of them rechargeable, but they do have the battery swap option. It's going to be iffy. Um, I'm curious to see how far they go. But... Keep in mind that a lot of the things that are going on, um, as far as food companies, a lot of people are actually getting their stuff delivered. Um, So Amazon is doing really well. The tech industry, like Facebook, is doing really well. Uh, Who else you got in the tech industry? You got GE, which is General Electric. They're doing well because everybody's using more electricity at their home. But once this vaccine come out, what would that look like? Will the technology division start to drop or will it maintain? That is something remain to be seen. I honestly think that the tech industry is going to drop dramatically once the vaccine is uh, widely available. But I do not think it's going to be widely available until, I'll say like Fauci said, uh, maybe in about three years, widely available. I think it's going to be available but we still got to make sure that the elderly, the children, and some of those who are high risk get taken care of first. And it's a lot of people. Then on top of that, you have to think about, all right, how long will it take to get people their jobs again? Because they have to do their resumes. They have to make sure that they are keeping their skills up to par. And if they weren't, 
during COVID, then they're actually running a little low. So you got to think about these things as you start investing. So if you're investing right now, starting out, look into the tech industry, see how that's going. Look at some of the factories or some of the companies that are about to open up their doors again, like the movie theater or the casinos or even hotels. So um, even the airlines, they said that they're going to lay off some more folks. I haven't seen them lay off anybody else, at least any big numbers, but a lot of companies are downsizing because a lot of people aren't using them as much. And so a lot of people are collecting unemployment. So think about the people because the people actually help run things. And also you got to think about it like Christmas is coming around the corner. Are people really going to buy that many toys? Are they going to send cards? You know, like how are things going to happen come, you know, December uh, with when the toy industry? What would that look like? So I want you all to kind of think about this kind of stuff when you're looking into investing. Now, if it comes to the point where there's just too many stocks to choose from, hey, pick something you like and just start there. Um, these companies are either A, going to go up. You can't have the fear of missing out because you'll actually go broke trying to chase everything. And there's only really a handful of options to get everything, which is to invest in the ETF, which is an exchange trade fund where you can actually invest into the total stock market. I did mention some of the stocks in prior episodes for the total stock market, but those are the companies or the ETFs that I would suggest to get into if that is, if you don't want to worry about the day-to-day stuff. So, all right. I think I said enough. Y'all probably tired of hearing about me. So anyway, remember, this is about your wallet. So enjoy. Take care. Well, that concludes this episode of About That Wallet. I hope this topic was helpful. If you want to get the latest episodes, please subscribe to this podcast, wherever you're listening to it. Remember, it is your duty to know about that wallet. Take care. Be safe. I'm out. Peace.